uh, who are quite fiercely resisted by some stakeholders, uh, some civil so society actors, and even some politicians. Eventually, these stakeholders have come to accept the ICOMs and are reaping the benefits. And this is why today uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about it. After a year of operations, the highs and the lows, uh, and most importantly, uh, where we are on the rollout program. So, Raymond, uh, thank you so much for making the time to be with us. Thank you, uh, thank uh, you. So, before we get into ICOMS, I guess maybe you're the best person to tell us a little bit about Ghana Link and, uh, you know, what you've been up to. Thank you very much, Kojo. Um, I'm happy to be here today. Mm. Um, Ghana Link uh, Network Services Limited is a, a wholly owned uh, Ghanaian limited liability company. It was registered on the 5th of um, June 2001. Um, we are into trade facilitation IT solutions. Right. So in 2003, we were one of um, five companies which were selected to provide destination inspection services for the GRE. Uh, to interest you to note that we were the only indigenous company uh, 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 performing this role in the country. Then um, in 2015, our contract with the government uh, came to an end. That was around April. Then by September, we were contracted to provide um, external verification services to the GRE Customs Division together with our um, um, external partners, then OMIC of uh, Japan. Then in 2018, um, the government of Ghana contracted us to provide um, a single service solution for the management of the processes at the port. So the birth of ICOMS came to being. And um, we are doing this, like you rightly mentioned, together with our technical partners from Korea, the Korea Customs Service, they have an agency which is Kupia Customs Unipass International Agency. So they have developed this uh, Unipass system which they are currently using in Korea and across um, um, various uh, countries uh, in the world, even including Africa. I think uh, Cameroon and Tanzania have already deployed the Unipass system. So um, this is where we are today, mm. having started from March of, of, of last year, like you rightly mentioned, at the, at the Frontier Stations. Okay, so we're talking to Raymond Amaglu. Uh, he's the Director of Operations at Ghana Link Network Services Limited. They run ICOMs at the ports. Um, so, are you satisfied with the performance of uh, uh, the new system, you know, Integrated Customs Management System? Well, you indeed. Um, we are more than satisfied. We are very proud of ourselves, um, considering what we have been able to achieve um, um, within this relatively short period of time. Uh, one year, and considering that not many gives us a dog's chance to be able to deliver, um, we, we, are, we are very proud. Of course, um, we're not resting on our oars. There is a lot that we still are yet to do. Uh, as you may know, the, the system is being deployed in two phases. Mm. We are currently done with the deployment of the phase one models, and work is um, um, seriously ongoing for the deployment of phase two um, from, from the end of this month towards the end of the year. So we are, we are very proud. The, 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 the benefits are, 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 are quite obvious. Um, with regards to trade facilitation, we currently are able to clear, clear goods from the port within a matter of a day, uh, all things being equal, sometimes in, in a matter of hours. And um, there has been a huge cost savings to, to, to the business community because um, you, 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 would, you would have to go through this system. Um, um, it's an electronic system. You could work on the system from the comfort of your home, from the comfort of your car, your office, and you would do all the processes. The only time you would need to go to the port is when you physically have to go for what they call a, a, a physical inspection, mm -hmm. and then you take delivery of your, of your goods from the port. So the true paperless port system is, is at play at the port currently. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we, are, we, are, we, we can confidently say that this system favorably compares with um, systems that are being used in uh, 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 advanced countries across the world. And um, when you talk about the revenue, um, since the deployment of ICOMs in June of last year, on a month-on-month -month basis, we've, we've seen an increase in the, in, the, in the revenue that is generated by the GRA. And, and, and when you talk about the security of the goods that are coming and going, 
the, the, the risk management model is, is such a robust uh, uh, system such that um, uh, uh, the security is very tight at the port. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you wouldn't hear of uh, a situation of uh, a container missing at the port. It's, it's not possible right. under ICOMS currently. So, so we, are, we are very happy. So you've talked about how you're proud of what you've done over the period. Now, when it started, are you saying you haven't encountered any challenge? When it started, the uh, you know, freight forward has had lots of concerns. They've talked about when it comes to even vehicles, their classification. They, didn't, they couldn't put in the models and all of that. So I'm sure there's been challenges that you've been trying to you know, solve over the period, isn't it? Very, very much so. In fact, um, uh, 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 change, is, change is always um, not an easy thing, especially so when people have become accustomed to a certain way of doing things. So when, when we were telling people about the promise of outcomes, people did not really understand or appreciate it. It affected our ability to provide adequate uh, training for all the stakeholders. Like I mentioned, this is a single system. You play, you play every, every function or activity from beginning to end on the system, and you needed to be trained on how to go about it because it's slightly different from what used to pertain. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't get very good cooperation from stakeholders, and therefore, at the time of the rollout, especially in Tema, uh, there was a bit of a chaos. And you know, the transition process was also um, probably not the best uh, 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 under the circumstances, but it also, in a way, affected um, our processes because, you know, people had already started transactions in the previous systems, and then when the previous systems were off, the, the, there was a difficulty with them to proceed because we didn't have those records in our system. Yes. But eventually, we have had very, very good um, um, cooperation from all the stakeholders, our free forwarder fraternity, our terminal operators, our, our shipping lines, airlines, they've all come around and um, we've had very good uh, uh, training sessions for all of them. Training is a continuous thing we are doing. Um, and even currently, there are trainings, training programs ongoing for various stakeholders. We've also made available um, manuals and videos of our, of our processes on our, on our website, uh, external.unipassghana.com. Okay. So, and we continuously engage with the stakeholders. And Talking about records, you not having records from, you know, the previous transactions. I, I remember at the time, it was one of the main issues. How did you get over it? How did you solve that? Did you get them eventually? <laughs> yes, eventually. Eventually. But we, 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 ha we had to cross the hurdle um, um, in a very difficult way. How? How, how, how did you cross <laughs> that hurdle? I'm interested. Um, the, the Commissioner General of Customs, Commissioner of Customs, uh, they played a human's role. They helped us to uh, come up with a, what customs call a, 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 a CPC, a Custom Procedure Code, that enables um, such processes which hadn't started on ICOMS to be continued on ICOMS. So um, there was so a way... So started under GC network continued? Yes, they were continued eventually on ICOMS and were able to uh, uh, clear, clear cargo for which transactions had started on, on previous systems. So uh, we were able to overcome that eventually, yeah. Um, uh, so, so for the period when you couldn't access that data, was it possible for people to present GCNet documentation or purported GCNet documentation to uh, government agencies and claim to have paid their duty without ICOMS being able to verify? Yes, yeah, so of course. We couldn't verify those at the time because we didn't have um, data on those. But customs also have um, their own way of uh, confirming or verifying some of these things. So with the, with the procedure code that I, I, I talked about, they were able to um, confirm these processes before the process could now continue on ICOMS for, for the clearance of the cargo. Right. Okay. So now you have that information, all of it retrospectively. You can check everything that happened before you were given access? Yes, th th those data have been made available to the GRE currently. Right, okay. Now, you were talking about stakeholders earlier, and um, there was some resistance, as, as we've uh, discussed, from, from stakeholders. Um, do you feel that some of their complaints perhaps were, were, were justified at the time? Very much so, very much so. Like I mentioned, um, somebody has imported, say, uh, 20, 40 footer container goods. The person probably has even paid duties. All the person was left to do was to take delivery of the cargo from the port. And because the previous system, I mean, was off, 
the person was stranded and it came along with a uh, huge uh, uh, charges on on demorage rent interest charges and all that so yes there were, there was there was a bit of a challenge uh, 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 which were, was very genuine and therefore the complaints then were 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 genuine yeah i, I would say Give us an update on training. I know that uh, there's supposed to be training for stakeholders on the ICOM system, but not everybody has received their training yet. Uh, why is that, and uh, w what's going to be done about it? In, in fact, it's actually the, the, the opposite. Our, every stakeholder has, has received training, and training continues. Like I said, even today, there's a training, there are training programs that are ongoing for various stakeholders. Because the system is interlinked with all the players in the supply chain, and, and, and the fact that we have connected our systems to their systems, whatever one person does at one end is, is available to be seen at the other end by the other player. So if we do not get all players adequately trained and onboarded, then there will, be, there will be a challenge, there will be a truncation in the process. Mm. So we are constantly engaging the stakeholders. We have virtual, virtual training programs with them. We have in-person training programs. And it's a continuous thing we are doing. So largely, all stakeholders or agencies who, who are connected to the system have had a, a adequate training on, on ICOMS. Right, we're talking to Raymond Amaglo. He is the Director of Operations for the Ghana Link Network Services. Uh, they are the ones who operate ICOMS at our ports. Now, let's turn our attention to revenue, okay? I mean, this is why we're doing all of this, really. And governments, one of government's main drivers um, uh, for, for bringing in ICOMS. Uh, so, w w how has that situation evolved? Is it, has it improved? Yes, uh, revenue has improved um, quite significantly. Uh, right from June, when the system was deployed, uh, we've seen um, an average, averagely around 30% increase in, in revenue. And uh, this, is, this is because the system, the system is quite robust. Mm -hmm. um, 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 if you have not fulfilled the certain requirements, the system would, would prevent you from being able to proceed to the next stage. And like I mentioned, because all stakeholders are on the, on the platform, they are able to tell whether you have fulfilled one requirement or the other before you can even I mean, come, come to them to, mm. to perform the next, the next function. Right. So the system is quite robust, and it has ensured that uh, compliance levels have, have largely increased. And uh, to a large extent, discretionary powers that um, officers had uh, as much as possible have been reduced. So uh, I, I, would, I would say that um, with regards to revenue, the system is, is, is performing very well. So let's look at the figures. Um, what's been, what was the previous figure? What figures are we making now? I would normally prefer that uh, the, the GRA will, will speak to the figures. But I, 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 I heard the Your commissioner. system is being used to facilitate yes. that, so you will know. We are, we are service providers, and yes. um, the, 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 the system is owned by, 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 by the government through the GRA. But of course, like I said, I heard, I heard the Commissioner General of uh, Customs um, in an interview yesterday where he mentioned that previously um, the revenue that was accruing was anything between 800 to 900 million cities a month. But since the inception of ICOMS, we are doing averagely 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 million, million, million So uh, that's what the, the uh, GRA uh, boss said? Yes, the commissioner. Is it true? It's very true. Okay. Very All true. Right. Now, that particular figure, I don't know whether you've seen uh, this letter written by uh, a deputy uh, commissioner of the GRA, Anthony Doku, in uh, April 2015. He indicated that uh, we lost about 36 billion Ghana cities, estimatedly, at our points of entry, and something should be done about it. We're looking at less than 18 billion in a year. That should be woefully inadequate. Well, uh, I'm not too sure what went into the estimates then, but... Uh, but you talked about the leakages at our points of entry and indicated that based on the leakages, we're losing about 36 billion Ghana cities. Like I mentioned, I'm not too sure what went into the projections. Mm. But um, as I have um, explained, um, with the introduction of ICOMS, um, a lot of these uh, 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 loopholes have been blocked. Uh, as I mentioned... Not all of them, a lot of them, not all of them. Of course. Um, uh, it, it, every, it's not everything that is managed by the system. 
there are human beings who are having to play various roles on the system. So to the extent that uh, leakages can be plugged, the system is working at that. And on a constant basis, um, based on engagements we are having with stakeholders, we are, we are improving, improving the situation. So you, you, you say that you have not blocked all the loopholes, all the leakages. You are working uh, to ensure that is done. Yes, we are, we are working to, to, to achieve that goal eventually. But like I said, to a very large extent, um, 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 the system is, is that robust. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're talking to uh, Raymond Amaglo, is the Director of Operations at Ghana Link Network Services Limited, the operators of the ICOM system at the ports. So tell us, Raymond, uh, single window, paperless modules, are they also part of the ICOMs that you're running? Yeah, very much so. Um, as I've already mentioned, it's, it's an end-to-end -end system. So all the players play their role in the system. You log in with a single login account. You perform all your roles. Now, if you need to obtain certificate, license, or permits from the various uh, MDAs, uh, 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 you, you do the application once on mm -hmm. the system. And once you do the application, all the st various stakeholders receive your application, and then they, they give the necessary approvals. Once you have obtained the approvals, Customs are notified. You are able to obtain assessment of your of your declaration. Once you obtain your assessment, you make payment, and all these are done online. You make payment, and then the next thing is for you to wait for the arrival of your cargo. That is, if you had used the clearance option pre-manifest declaration. This option is that, is that different from the direct cargo delivery? Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very different. Okay. The pre-manifest declaration enables you to make a declaration ahead of the arrival of, of, of the vessel. Mm. So you make applications to customs with your bill of lading, parking list, invoice, other documents that you have. Once you have obtained them, you make the application. Customs does the assessment, gives you a feedback right on the system with a bill, which you, the declarant, can accept if you are comfortable or reject if you are not, and then an appeal process starts immediately. But once you accept, you make payment at the bank, and then you wait on if it is two weeks, three weeks, one month, how long the ship arrives. Once the ship arrives, you just need to now go to the port, go through the clearance process to take to take delivery of your of your of your cargo. Mm. Yeah. So that's the direct cargo delivery. No, that is the pre-manifest declaration. So with the, with tell the us direct, about the direct okay, cargo delivery. Okay. The direct cargo delivery is a is a new feature we have we have introduced uh, quite mm. recently. It, it enables the delivery of uh, 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 cargo uh, right from the vessel to let's say the, the the owner. What what it means is that you would have had to do a pre-manifest declaration. You make your application to customs. Your bill is generated. You make payment. You wait. Now, when, when, your, when your cargo arrives, then you, 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 you make a request for a direct delivery. That is after manifest has been submitted by the shipping line. Once you make the request, all this is done online. Then, then customs approves of your request, and then you're able to take delivery of the cargo. The, the, the direct delivery enables the uh, management of a situation where, for example, uh, uh, the, the holding area is not capable to, to hold what cargo you are bringing. For example, if, it, if it's clinker, or if it is a dangerous good, say a chemical, uh, 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 and you need to take it dire that directly, you can, you can use this option, and then you take delivery of the cargo directly from the ship, and then you exit, exit the, the, the customs uh, area. Mm. Well, that sounds very efficient and uh, uh, useful for importers. Now, after the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is in force, um, uh, we know Casapreco and Gandor Cosmetics have uh, both uh, exported under that. Um, uh, any others? Any other companies doing that? Okay, I'm 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 I'm, I'm very happy to say that uh, Ghana was one of the countries by the first of uh, April when when AFTAC uh, went live, first one of the first countries in Africa to be to be ready with AFTAC. Like you mentioned, a few companies have already um, come mm. on board. The, the three main agencies are the uh, 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 Ministry of Trade, the, the GRA, who are the authorized uh, uh, mm. uh, operators, and then the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. You make the applications on ICOMS, and then for both for export and import, and you are able to go through the process very seamlessly. I am, I am aware that uh, uh, Muti, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, they are currently engaging um, uh, manufacturers who are into export, 
uh, to handhold them in the process of getting them to take full advantage of the of the after process mm. uh, as provisioned by the system. Right, Raymond. Uh, when will phase two of uh, ICOMS be uh, co completed, and uh, what are some of the modules we can expect under phase two? Uh, um, work, 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 work is far advanced with a, a good number of the models. We are expecting to start deployment of the first two models towards the end of this month, up to the end of the year. Mm. Uh, I will mention a few of these uh, uh, models we are introducing. We have what we call the e-wallet. The e-wallet is and enables a, a declarant who has overpaid in, when he has done a transaction with um, um, GRA to, to use uh, uh, the overpaid amount as an option to defray his subsequent uh, uh, payment to, to, to the GRA. Mm. We also have the e-auction. The e-auction uh, enables um, where goods have gone into UCL, that is on clear cargo list, after a number of days, if you have not paid duty, I think it is about 21 days for, for vehicles and about 60 days for, no, 21 days for general goods and 60 days for vehicles. Uh, if you have not made payment, you, 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 your, your goods, are, are, they go into UCL. Mm. Then what happens is that um, customs will do evaluation and classification of, of, of the goods in question. Right. And then they are gazetted. Well, after the gazette, then a publication uh, for, for auction is made. And mm. on the ICOMS platform, um, mm. individuals from wherever they are mm. are able to bid. And then whoever wins the bid makes payment after the bill is generated and then takes delivery of, of the auction good. Right. Uh, there is also one very interesting one, which is the advanced passenger information system. This will be deployed at the, at the airport. It will enable um, profiling of um, both uh, cargo and passengers. So right. various agencies will obtain advanced information, and they will be able to determine how to manage um, 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 both passengers and cargo, mm. and also with regards to uh, the, the, the revenue uh, uh, areas that customers must pay attention to, mm. this will help manage the situation at the, at the, at the airport. Right. Uh, uh, just a few of the models that we are deploying. That's wonderful. Uh, it sounds like uh, bright days ahead uh, for ICOMS. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming to uh, fill us in on what you've been up to. Raymond Amaglo is the Director of Operations for Ghana Link Network Services Limited. They operate the ICOMS system at our ports. Thanks again for your time. Thank you so much, Kujo. Very grateful. Right, it's a super morning show and there's more to come after these, especially our conversation about uh, the minister's press conference yesterday on education. Lots to learn after these. Uh, we are going to live within the present promise of five to seven years to eliminate double track. The president has committed to that and he's doing that. Talk about infrastructure. 1.5 billion potentially available for school construction. Have seen buildings in school.